Hey guys, my name is Nick, I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. This is part three of a three-part series I've created for the Business Voice SKU that just came out in the US on April 1st. In this video, we're going to be going through the admin settings available to you and then the end user experience as well too. So popping into my Teams Admin Center here, I have a few settings that I can configure here beyond what's globally defaulted. So the first thing I'm drilling down into here under voice is the calling policies. So with calling policies, everybody by default has this org-wide policy set up. And you have these settings turned on where they can make private calls, they can allow call forwarding, simultaneous ringing, anything like that. And voicemail is able to be forwarded as well too from the end user's control. So if you do want to restrict any of these things, that you, you can, um, but otherwise I don't really see a ton of issues from having these on by default, especially not too many security concerns as well either in that sense. But you can add more global policies as well too. They have a few in here uh, that you'll see that you can configure directly. And then, so you have your caller ID policies here as well too that you can set. You can go into the global policy here and configure this if you want to block incoming caller ID, for instance, or replace the caller ID with some type of number. The only situation I would see you wanting to use this is if you want all outbound calls to show up as your main business line when somebody in the organization is making an outbound call. Otherwise, you can configure this one how you see fit. Call park policies are off by default, but you can go ahead and turn them on or create custom ones to scope to certain users. And with these, this is the one where you can pause a call or, or hold a call and grab a call park ID, which you can send to anybody and they can pick up the call from their team's environment. So by default, again, this is turned off, but I've turned it on just for the sake of the demo to show you that from the end user standpoint. So you have those abilities there. In the user section here as an admin, you can come into any user to view certain information. So in this particular view, I can click on Adele here, for instance, and I can see certain settings that are available here. I can click on voice to see the group call pickup. I can add people here. If she does forward that into a group call pickup line itself, or I can add call delegation. If uh, this is an executive, for instance, I wanna be able to have people that can receive on calls on her behalf and take calls on her behalf as well too in the organization. So you can set all that up here. The end user, which you'll see as well too, you can set up and uh, they'll be able to do that from within their team's environment unless you block them from doing so in the calling policy section here. The Dial outbound settings that you can set is for the, any destination in the same country or region as the organizer or don't allow. So you can prevent them here as well too from being able to configure their own call groups or their own delegation. From the policy section here, this is where you can create custom policies like I created a custom call park call policy for Adele and I assigned it to her there. So we will wait for that to propagate. I just did that, so that'll take a few minutes to, to go into effect, but you can click on edit on any of these and switch out any one user. Additionally, you can of course connect to PowerShell and you can control the user that way as well too. So from the end user standpoint, if we pop into their portal, they see this when they sign in. After you assign them a number, Teams will give them a pop-up notification saying, hey, this is your number, and kind of give them a self-tour of their new features that are available, which is really cool, so that you don't have to do that yourself as the administrator. Here we have our calling line. This is their number that they can see. They can use the dial pad to call out to any internal organization or external organization member, and you can immediately start to call or video chat with any of the suggested contacts here or create speed dial request or something like that too. Additionally, you can create a new group for speed dial that calls the people simultaneously or one at a time. You can configure that as well too here. For voicemail, they have the voicemail that comes through here and it's already transcribed on their screen so they can see that immediately. The call history is here as well too with all the incoming and outbound calls and missed calls. 
that were available in the organization or, or sorry to this user in particular and then over here in the right hand corner you have the ability to go into the settings and this is where you configure some more of the the actual voice settings as well too so here you can manage the delegates if you want to have somebody make or receive calls on your behalf this is more so if you're an executive and have an EA or something like that but then for calls you can set this to forward your calls to somebody or you can set it to uh, ring for you and you can define different ringtones and things like that for the voicemail by default it just is a plain bot that says hey Adele Vance is not available at this time please leave a message after the tone um, if they want to configure something special for that they can record their voicemail here and that's what will play anytime they decline a call or it goes to, to voicemail after a certain number of rings um, so you can simultaneously ring uh, another person at this time or you can send somebody else uh, as far as if unanswered you can go to new number or contact and this is where you could type in an external number to forward this to as far as the routing goes if you want to do that this is how you have to do that and it has to be a licensed user in order to send it to an external caller and the same thing goes for a forward my calls if you are wanting to go straight to an external number you could say new name or contact voicemail or call group and with the call group you can start defining people and you can define what um, you want the ring to be all at the same time or in an order of which you add people here so lots of options available again with the policies as an admin you could restrict this if you really wanted to um, but it's up to you if you want to come in here and actually do that or not usually you want to have a pretty uniform policy across all users that they can go and do for the block calls here you have the manage block numbers block calls with no caller ID is available for them to turn on and then down here if they are part of a call queue they and you set the settings that they could opt out of it they could turn this off and not be one of the people who is ringed so this may be something where you don't want them to be able to, to eliminate themselves or if you want to give them that flexibility in case they're you know extremely busy one day and they want to just turn it off for one day instead of having to make multiple requests to you to turn that on and off uh, they have the ability to do that themselves so couple options there for them in the sense of being able to configure their settings and change their voicemail if they want as well so that's everything in the settings tab so let's go ahead and give this a call and see what some of the options are available to the end user then as well too so let me go back into my phone here in order to just go ahead and give her a call And we'll go ahead and answer. It's going to ask in the browser there if you can use the camera and everything like that as well too. So this is everything that they can see when it's on their phone uh, or on their mobile device as well in the sense of um, workstation. So here we have a couple of different settings here. You have show device settings, hold transfer consult and transfer so transfer just allows you to pull up somebody here um, you can directly go to their work or you can go to their work voicemail immediately if you just want to send them directly to the voicemail you can start to search for users here within your active directory environment and it'll pop them up here if they're not already listed and from the standpoint of consult and transfer very similar here where you can click on a user and you can just chat with them back and forth and then transfer all within the single pane without actually having to go out and go to chat and start talking with them there. So that's a really cool experience. That's all part of the unified communications here that you have with Teams. So I can say stop consulting there and I have that the ability to resume and then device settings. This is where you could switch between a headset or if you wanted to, to switch in the sense of the microphone or speaker, you have the ability to do so. So all of that is available to you there as far as the end user experience and everything that you can do when you call in. The last thing I wanted to show is the call park. 
So I'll pause for a brief moment while that propagates and be right back. Okay, so we're back here and it took about an hour for this to actually propagate, but once you have that done, it will come up here in the right hand corner. You can just say park calls. So that's gonna be available for you if you were to receive a call and get the code from another individual within the organization. But I'm gonna show you here what it looks like as far as getting an inbound call and then transferring that over. So we're gonna pick up this call here. And then on top of this line here, we're going to go ahead and click on the three dots one more time. And now you'll see these, this uh, park call is available here. You can click on that. It'll say parking. And then up here in the left-hand corner, you have the ability to copy that code and hand it off to somebody else. And they're able to use that speed dial park calls area here to go ahead and pick up that call and take it as far as a cold transfer goes. That's everything I wanted to show you with that. So that's everything I wanted to show you guys from this demo standpoint here. One last piece that I'll link below here is a good resource. This is a sample statement of work. This is directly from Microsoft. You can white label this for your company, but this is a statement of work that you would use to move somebody off an on-prem solution or a legacy solution to Microsoft 365 business. So it's a great head start. I know you might have preset templates for project management work or pro serve work that you may do, but this is a good template for the verbiage and wording and considerations that you'll need. So again, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them or comment below about Microsoft 365 business. Again, if you want to see additional content here as well too, in the sense of SMB market or related to Microsoft, like or subscribe to the channel. Thanks guys and have a great day.